In the last two topics, we have examined the factors and processes of respiration. What are the organs of respiration in different animals? How does a unicellular animal respire? What are the respiratory organs in multicellular organisms? In unicellular animals, the cell membrane is used for respiration. In multicellular animals, the cells are not exposed to the external environment. Hence, there are specialized organs for both intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. These organs of respiration constitute the respiratory system. The animals living in water procure oxygen from water, while the terrestrial organisms procure oxygen from the surrounding environment. Based on the body size, habitat, availability of water and the nature of the circulatory system, there are different types of respiratory organs. Earthworm, leech, amphibians respire through skin. This respiration is called cutaneous respiration. Insects respire through trachea. This respiration is called tracheal respiration. Fishes, crabs, tadpole larvae of frog respire through gills. This respiration is called brachial respiration. Amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals respire by lungs. This respiration is called pulmonary respiration. What are the stages in respiration? There are two stages in respiration. External respiration and internal respiration. In external respiration, Oxygen is procured from the external source, either air or water. Internal respiration involves the supply of oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body through blood vessels and removal of carbon dioxide from the tissues. External respiration can be further divided into inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation is procurement of oxygen from external source. Exhalation is removal or expulsion of carbon dioxide from the lungs to external atmosphere. Let us now examine different respiratory organs in animals. Why don't we look at amoeba as a unicellular example? You know that amoeba is a unicellular animal. It lives in water. The cell membrane acts as a respiratory structure. Amoeba obtains oxygen and removes carbon dioxide through the cell membrane by diffusion. The second type of respiration is cutaneous respiration. There are a number of invertebrates and some vertebrates which respire through skin. This type of respiration is termed cutaneous respiration. An example of invertebrates is earthworm. An vertebrate example is frog. As an example, let's examine cutaneous respiration in earthworm. We know that hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment. In earthworm, there are no red blood cells. The hemoglobin is present in the plasma of the blood. The skin is richly supplied with blood vessels. The skin acts as the respiratory organ. There are no other specialized organs for respiration in earthworm. The skin of earthworm is always kept moist by the silomic fluid. The moist skin absorbs oxygen from surroundings and the blood vessels in the skin absorb this oxygen. The carbon dioxide is released out of the body through skin. Coelomic fluid comes out of skin through small pores 
called dorsal pores. The cells in skin secrete a sticky fluid mucus. Mucus absorbs water and helps in preventing the skin to become dry. Earthworm lives in burrows deep in the soil where its skin remains moist. In the outer atmosphere the skin becomes dry. However, earthworm cannot live in burrows if they are filled with water. This is the reason that we find a number of earthworms on the surface of the soil during rainy seasons. A vertebrate that respires through skin is frog. The cutaneous respiration in frog is an addition to the regular organs of respiration that is lungs. The reason for this is that the frog is an amphibian. It can live both in water and land. When frog is in the water, the respiration is only through skin. When it is on land, lungs are the main organs of respiration. The skin of frog is supplied with glands which secrete mucus. Mucus always keeps the frog's skin moist. This mucus absorbs the water and can retain it for a long time. The rich network of blood vessels in the skin absorb oxygen and supply it to different parts of the body through blood circulation. Carbon dioxide is expelled out of the blood through skin. If the skin of frog dries, it dies. During summer, frog burrows deep into the soil and undergoes a summer sleep called estivation. In the burrows, there is very minimal amount of evaporation of moisture. Frog comes out only during the night to feed. Even in the winter season, frog goes into burrows and lives in burrows. This is called winter sleep or hibernation. During both estivation and hibernation, frog respires through skin. The third type of respiration is tracheal respiration. The foundation for future well-developed respiratory system was laid with the tracheal system. During the course of evolution, insects developed some tubes similar to the trachea found in higher organisms. Insects have a specialized system for respiration. This is called the tracheal system. The skin of insects is hard and impervious cuticle. It is found on the surface of the body and acts as a skeleton. It is known as exoskeleton. Hence, the insects cannot respire through skin. The blood in insects is colorless, devoid of hemoglobin. The circulation in insects is not effective and they have adopted an independent respiratory system to their circulatory system. Their respiratory system has a network of tracheal tubes inside the body. These tracheal tubes branch and end as thin walled tracheoles directly in the tissues. The trachea open out through small apertures called spiracles stigmata. The spiracles are present on the sides of the body and have walls which open and close the aperture. Each spiracle opens into a chamber called atrium. Each atrium opens in the tracheal tube which joins the longitudinal tracheal trunks. The longitudinal trunks branch and end directly in tissues as thin walled tracheoles. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is by diffusion by the walls of these tracheoles. As the tracheal system is connected to the tissue system directly, blood is not required for the exchange of gases. 
the body cavity of a cockroach expands during inhalation or inspiration. Due to this act, the air pressure in trachea reduces. Air rushes in through spiracles into the trachea and ultimately the tissues. During exhalation or expiration, the cockroach's body cavity contracts. The air pressure in trachea increases and is more than the outside air pressure. This results in the air rushing out of the trachea in the external atmosphere. Now we shall examine the fourth and fifth types of respiratory organs that is brachial through gills and pulmonary through lungs. Have you seen an aquarium? Did you observe the fish? Fish respire with the help of gills. By opening and closing of the mouth, water flows from the oral cavity and flows constantly over the gills. The water flows out through external gill apertures. The gills are richly supplied with blood vessels. As the water flows over gills, oxygen is absorbed from water and carbon dioxide is expelled into the water. Let us now examine the structures present in respiratory system of fish. It consists of internal brachial apertures, brachial pouches or gill pouches, external brachial apertures. The internal brachial pouches are connected to the pharynx internally and open to the outside by the external brachial apertures. The gill pouches possess the gills which are covered by a mucous membrane. There are several horizontal leaf like folds in gills called gill lamellae. They are richly supplied with blood vessels. In elasmobranchs or cartilaginous fish, the external brachial aperture is visible. In fish belonging to the category of bony fishes or the teleostai, the openings are covered by a bone called operculum. What are the respiratory organs in other vertebrates? The organs of respiration in majority of vertebrates other than fish are lungs. The respiration through lungs is called as pulmonary respiration. The pulmonary respiration is best understood by studying the human respiratory system. The respiratory organs in man are nose or nostrils, nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli, lungs. Human beings respire through nose or nostrils. The external part of the nose bears two nostrils separated by a septum. The nostrils are equipped with cells sensitive to smell. They can detect different types of odors. Further entry of any large particles is prevented by the presence of hair present in the nostrils. The nostrils open into the nasal passage or chambers. These passages are lined with glands which secrete mucus. The pharynx lies behind the mouth. The nasal cavity opens into the pharynx. This opening is common for both passage of air and food. Below the pharynx there are two passages, one for air and one for food. When food is passing the common passage into pharynx, 
It is prevented from entering the air passage and is closed by a flap like cartilaginous structure called epiglottis. Epiglottis covers the slit called glottis present at the beginning of the windpipe. The pharynx opens into larynx. The larynx is popularly called as Adam's apple. The larynx is a hollow cartilaginous structure which opens into trachea. There are two ligamentous folds in larynx called as vocal cords. The vocal cords act as resonators of the sound waves that vibrate and produce sound. The larynx opens into a long tube called trachea or windpipe. The trachea externally has a number of C-shaped cartilaginous rings. These rings give stability and flexibility to the trachea. They also prevent the collapse of the windpipe when there is no air in it. The trachea divides in front of the esophagus into two branches called bronchi. These bronchi enter the lungs on their respective sides. They divide into a number of branches in the lungs and these branches are called bronchioles. There are two lungs in the thoracic cavity. They lie in the rib cage which gives them protection. Each lung is enclosed in a double walled sac called pleura. Internally the lung has a number of thin walled air sacs called alveoli. In man the blood is associated with respiration. The red blood cells contain a respiratory pigment known as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the vehicle that transports gases in and out of lungs. How does respiration take place? What are the processes involved? Well, there are many processes. Let me share them with you. Breathing, gaseous transport, tissue respiration and cellular respiration. Let us examine the processes individually. Breathing involves inhalation or inspiration and exhalation or expiration. During inhalation, we breathe in air. This is how the oxygen in the air is taken into the lungs. During exhalation, we breathe out air. This is how the carbon dioxide is expelled from the lungs. In gaseous transport, the oxygen in the air is absorbed by the blood vessels present in the alveoli of lungs. This oxygen attaches to the hemoglobin by weak bonds and now the hemoglobin is called oxyhemoglobin. Blood carries it to different parts of the body from the lungs. The carbon dioxide from tissues forms a bond with hemoglobin. This compound is known as carbaminohemoglobin. This compound from different parts of the body is carried to the lungs by blood. In the lungs, the CO2 detaches from the hemoglobin and is expelled into the cavity of lungs. It is subsequently expelled out of the body during expiration. The blood vessels end as capillaries in tissues. The oxygen carried by blood from lungs easily diffuses through the capillaries into tissues and carbon dioxide is picked up by hemoglobin to be taken to lungs. All this is tissue respiration. In cellular respiration, the oxygen is utilized to produce energy from glucose in mitochondria of the cells. The production of energy involves a number of biochemical processes. During the stage of inhalation, the muscles of the thoracic cavity contract. Due to this contraction, the thoracic cavity expands and the diaphragm is lowered. This results in reduced air pressure in lungs in comparison to the external air pressure. The air rushes into the lungs through nostrils, trachea, 
bronchi, bronchioles and finally to the alveoli. The muscles of thoracic cavity come back to natural position. The diaphragm also comes back to its natural position. The air pressure in the lungs increases than the pressure outside. Air rushes out of the lungs and expelled through bronchi, trachea and nostrils. Both inhalation and exhalation are involuntary events. The air we breathe in is containing more oxygen than the air we breathe out. About 5 to 6 percent of the oxygen in air that we breathe in gets absorbed. The air we breathe out contains more carbon dioxide than the air we breathe in. In addition, the air we breathe out is saturated with water vapor. Due to breathing about 400 cubic centimeter of water is lost daily as water vapor from our body. In the tissues, various metabolic reactions produce carbon dioxide. The blood supplies oxygen to the parts where the concentration of carbon dioxide is high. The exchange of gases is dependent on different concentration of gases. This is called as tissue respiration. The oxygen in tissues is utilized by the cells to produce energy from glucose. The energy production involves oxidation of food that is glucose inside mitochondria. This is called cellular respiration. What is the capacity of lungs? How much air can they accommodate? A normal person can take in 500 milliliters of air. This is called as tidal volume. The rate of respiration is calculated by the volume of air breathed in a minute. This is called rate of ventilation. That is the rate of ventilation is equal to the tidal volume multiplied by the frequency of inspiration. The rate of ventilation varies depending on activity. The rate increases during heavy work. The volume of air that we breathe out is about 4500 milliliters. This is also known as tidal volume. Do we expel all the air from our lungs with maximum effort? No. The lung retains 1500 milliliters of air even if we put maximum effort to expel it. The retained air is called residual air. Inspiration of air with maximum effort can take in about 3000 milliliters more than the tidal volume of air. The additional volume of air is called the inspiratory reserve volume or IRV. The expiratory reserve volume is the air expelled out in addition to normal by maximum effort. The volume is about 1000 milliliters of air. This additional volume is called the expiratory reserve volume or ERV. How do we calculate vital capacity? The vital capacity is calculated by adding tidal volume to IRV and ERV that is 500 milliliters plus 3000 milliliters plus 1000 milliliters which is equal to 4500 milliliters. The total lung capacity includes the vital capacity and residual air which is 4500 milliliters added to 1500 milliliters which is equal to 6000 milliliters. Let us examine an important disease of the respiratory system. 
this disease is known as emphysema. Emphysema is a disease that affects the smokers. In a smoker, the walls of alveoli get broken and due to this event, the absorbing surface area inside lungs is reduced. As a result, less oxygen is absorbed. The heart in this situation is forced to supply more blood to tissues. The change in rate of heartbeat can lead to a heart stroke and death. My dear students, smoking is highly injurious to health. Keep away from this unhealthy habit. Live long with energy and enthusiasm.